Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar this afternoon. It's great to have so many of you joining us. So on the right hand side, you'll just see the little chat box at the moment. And I'm just going to type in and check whether you can hear me. So this is just a technical test to check that you can hear me through OK. So I hope everybody is keeping well and keeping safe. Um, it's certainly a very, very strange time at the moment for all of us. And um, I know that many of us are having to pivot to online training. So we're here to talk to you about that today and how you can make the most out of your CPD standards membership in terms of just getting those face-to-face -face courses that you've got online. So my colleague Daniel and I are going to talk to you about the process that you can go through and any questions that you've got. So I just want to say hello to Nazareth. It's great to see you and here. Um, we've got April, May, Joellen, Sarah, nice to see you, Gavin, James, Joanna. So, yeah, so many of you joining us. It's, it's really good to hear. So my colleague Daniel will join us really shortly and we can get started. Um, I know that many of us feel a little bit unsettled at the moment. Um, and um, it's quite strange for us to find ourselves in this position. We have run some previous webinars, which we can give you the links to at the end of this webinar, um, which give you a little bit more um, background in these. We, we ran one called um, The Seven Steps to Going Online, and this was about the different options that you can take and the different technologies that you can use. And then um, we ran a second one, which is um, entitled how to get your face to face online training fast using webinars. And uh, we talked through the abilities to um, use different technology platforms, which ones we'd recommend and how you are progressing that online. So hopefully my colleague Daniel will join us. Daniel, can you hear us OK? Are you there? No, he's just having some problems logging on. OK. Are you there, Daniel? Can you hear me? No. OK, well, hopefully he'll join us soon. So I just wanted to say once again, a warm welcome to everybody. There's still some people logging on. So it's great to see that uh, that so many of us are joining us this afternoon. Um, I think what we'll try and do now is get started. And Daniel, are you there yet? Can you hear me through OK? No, his microphone isn't switched on. OK, <laughs> well, just while Daniel um, sorts out his technical bits and pieces, um, I just wanted to give you all a really warm welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And as part of your membership with the CPD Standards Office and Training Excellence Accreditations, we want to support you in pivoting your face-to-face -face learning to online platforms. And I know that that is a particular um, area of issues for all of you. So um, I'm just going to get started now. So what we're going to do is a review of the online learning ecosystem as of spring uh, 2020. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time on the choice of online delivery channels. Um, and then we're going to work through what the streamlined assessment process is. And then we'll talk about our continued support during COVID-19 for all of you. So just um, to check, we'll be taking some questions as we work through this seminar. Um, so I just want to check if anybody's got any specific questions that you'd like me to cover at the moment. Is there anything that you can uh, that you would like us specifically to share. Use the chat box on the right. And if there's any questions, do put them on. Um, we can try and cover those off straight away. Hello, Trevor. Hi, Claire Marie. All nice to see you here. Wissam, great to hear you back again. That's absolutely wonderful. OK, so I haven't got any questions coming through. So 
the first thing that we need to think about is that the online world, particularly the online learning ecosystem, is expanding quite rapidly at the moment. So if you can imagine, we've got this idea of different learning online platforms engaging increasingly with a, a number of learners. And one of the big things that our employers are interested in doing is getting their employees to spend their additional time that they've got and use that to develop new skills and new learning. So we've seen an absolute boom in online learning as an industry. And um, it's really interesting because people want to make sure that what they're undertaking is absolutely verified. It's going to be worth what it says on the tin and it's going to be absolutely relevant learning. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, the using your accreditations at the moment is absolutely critical because you can then show that you've had an external verification process um, and that you do promote and run outstanding learning systems. So just got a couple of questions here. April May says, what's the best platform to use? Well, I'll, I'll cover that in a little bit. Um, it really depends when it comes to online platforms, whether you want to upload your course to a platform that already has a marketplace. So, for example, Udemy and Coursera offer a huge marketplace with millions of people logged on that they can promote your course to. Um, but the flip side of that is that you don't have complete control over your pricing. So if you then want to use a platform whereby you promote the learning, you set the pricing, but obviously don't necessarily have a dedicated audience um, to the to the actual platform that you're engaging in, then you can think about using a platform such as Thinkific or Teachable, which are really, really straightforward in terms of uploading content. There's also a great platform called Kajabi. That's not the cheapest option, but that also enables you to easily upload videos and to take people through a modular learning session. And that's quite useful, given that people will be sort of going on to their online learning off and on. So Barry's asking, how long does the offer of free digital accreditation run, please? Um, it's as long as it needs to, Barry, probably throughout the rest of the year, although I'm obviously hoping that we switch back to normal as soon as possible. And ZB, um, sorry if that's not your full name, but that's how it's coming through, is asking how to um, assess practical aspects of a training. Um, I'll just come on to that in a minute. Lynn um, is asking, can you, we have these names in writing? Yes, absolutely. We will um, um, develop a PDF uh, with the links on that we're recommending and also we'll make sure that you've got copies of the slides and also copies of this recording so that you can work through. So absolutely, Andrew, you can hear, um, you, we'll be able to get the copies through. So Reese and Claire have said that the sound's gone. Is that the same for everybody or can you still hear me? Um, in is I'm not sure what's happened, um, whether you can hear me. Um, as far as I know, my microphone is working. So what you need to make sure is that your speakers are definitely switched on. All right, so just moving on to the next slide. So we've got now what is increasingly being called as uh, called a digital twin. So our digital twin is the person that we are online. It's our Facebook profiles, it's our LinkedIn learning profiles, any other social media that we're present on. And increasingly, people are looking to create their digital twin and show their digital presence online in a professional way. Now, one of these things um, or an area that people are really keen to develop, and we're seeing it increasingly with digital badges, 
are the proof that they've undertaken a certain amount of learning. And so remember um, your brownie and your scout badges that you used to collect once you'd completed a certain amount of assessment criteria and that you could show off. Um, then you can do that using digital badges and listing it on the linked um on the LinkedIn profile. So the digital twin is becoming more and more prevalent. And as the web continues to develop, there will be less and less um, anonymity on the um, on the web. And so where we're moving to in the future is there won't be the ability to create bogus Facebook or social media accounts. There won't be the ability to upload misinformation or fake news. And slowly with blockchain technology, um, you, you will be able to see uh, transactions and everything that's verified in terms of learning, in terms of education, in terms of purchases. So the rep is going to become increasingly transparent and your digital twin and your learner's digital twins are ever more present on the internet. So that's something that you've really got to keep in mind. How are your learners with their digital twins going to display their learning? And obviously, one of the things that we are working on with you at the moment is the ability to issue digital certificates and digital badges using the blockchain technology. So if any of you are interested in and haven't got the codes to log on to that portal, we can give um, we can give you that um, separately. And essentially what you're looking to do is issue these digital badges to a broader audience so that you can um, basically ensure that your learner can prove that they've undertaken that learning. And obviously that's key now in terms of employers and promotional um, opportunities that you can show that you've undertaken a lot of learning. Okay, so then we're moving on to your online learning delivery channels. And this is a section and a consultation that Daniel is offering. Um, as, and you can book a 30 minute consultation call with my colleague Daniel, where he'll take you through a membership consultation. And what he's going to really talk you through is all of the various delivery channels that you can look at, because it's not just about creating face to face um, courses, flipping that to online and then just delivering it straight off the bat. You've got to think about are you going to do pre recorded videos? Are you going to generate PDFs? Or are you going to look at live presentations and shorten the slide decks that you've got from your face to face learning? Um, how are you going to engage with people in the in the live classroom? Are you going to use technologies where they can break out into breakout rooms and workers groups and then come back to you? And then how are you going to get feedback? And I'll come on to that in a second. So you really need to think through what's your delivery format going to be and how much time can you put in to creating that. And so Daniel is available for membership consultations. And again, we'll send out the link so you can book one of those. Um, when the, the initial consultation is 30 minutes, but of course, we'll give you as much support as you need in order to convert that training and think about those online learning channels. Because you see, you don't just need to create a pre-recorded course, you could deliver a live classroom session, you could create pre-recorded webinars, there's obviously podcast options, and some of our providers even engage in tweet chats, whereby they interact with people solely on Twitter, which is quite an unusual and innovative way of using Twitter. But again, it's quite um, transparent and really able to engage with your audiences um, separately and increase your following. So there's, there's various different ways that you can think about that. Um, Verna, yes, of course, we can give you the code to the portal. That's not a problem at all. Um, we'll be in touch with you separately about that. Um, okay, so 
carrying on um, with your membership consultation, Daniel will talk you through the technology and the resource requirements that you need that you need because you need to create something that's called a tech stack. So you need to think about how are you going to introduce the content to your audience? How are you going to set up payment gateways? And then how are you going to design infographics? And the best platform to design any infographics or any sort of digital thumbnails is Canva. So if you come across Canva, it's canva.com. It's completely free to use. Um, you can, um, if there's certain images that you need to pay for, but it's an absolutely brilliant way in that you can design um, different postcards, thumbnails, infographics really easily. You can insert your branding and it looks really great in terms of your advertising. So we, in terms of live delivery, if you're delivering a live classroom um, and previous to that um, or previous to that, you've been delivering it as a one day course. We suggest that you don't take any more than two and a half hours to undertake a live classroom and up to an absolute maximum at the moment of 100 participants. Um, if you're going to do something with breakout rooms and you're going to have to think about um, organising activities, you may want to work with a much smaller group um, just in case there's lots of questions coming through. Now, on our last webinar, we talked about how the, the uh, online learning world is, is flipping, is changing to a flipped classroom. So for those of you that haven't come across this term, the flipped classroom is the idea that rather than join, rather than having everybody in the room, having done no prep work or had an introduction to the course at all, whereby you're almost um, teaching at the pace of the slowest person in the room, the person that's potentially asking the questions and you need to go back over and do um, um, a re recapping the information for them. Um, you then um, need to think about within a flipped classroom model, the giving your content and the reading and some of the slide deck to the participants before you run the live courses. So they work through a certain amount of material. And then when you undertake the live session with them, it's about using group activities and as much interaction as you can using your online technology to really cement the learning. So, oh. Um, is that Daniel joining us? Can you hear us, Daniel? Uh, no, sorry about that. Um, so there's there's um, there's a little bit of problems with our technical areas. So Trevor has mentioned that he regularly trains online with over 250 participants. Okay, Trevor, that's that's really interesting. I wonder if you could give us a little bit more information in the chat box about that, and we can talk about that as as we progress onwards. So as I said, you really need to think about um, your tech stack that you've got overall, how are you going to introduce people, how are you going to undertake payment gateways, what is going to be your overall live delivery, um, whether you're going to use um, something like Facebook Live or Zoom. Zoom is so popular at the moment, it's unbelievable. Um, and then how are you going to think about assessment? And we did have a question earlier about online assessment. So if you've got um, particular questions that you want to ask people and get particular feedback on, then Thinkific is probably the best technology platform for you um, because it's got a quiz maker at the end of it. So it's a way that you can set up a quiz or some sort of online exam format and then basically set a pass rate. So that's something that you should definitely engage with and, and think about. And as I said earlier, these slides and uh, PDF uh, with all of the links on will be distributed after this webinar. So Trevor says, OK, for a particular client, uh, work is the limited factor. Um, 
they make their courses open across all of their organizations and they're very much a one-way session either in terms of uh, the instructor talking because it's very difficult to have interactivity with 250 people yes well i absolutely agree with that um so if you've got sort of less than 50 or 60 you can organize interactive um two-way pre presentations and seminars but if definitely if you've got a large group then it very much is a one-way presentation so um, I've got a couple of questions here um, in terms of Zoom um, because a lot of people have seen the news that Zoom might not be as secure as um, other technology platforms I, th I think as we said last time on the webinar when the similar question came up this is um, an area that Zoom are definitely working on. And certainly in the last week, I've seen that Zoom have now created passwords for every single online meeting or session that you're running. So they're definitely tightening up their, their confidentiality and the way that people are accessing and using the system. Um, I, I wouldn't be too worried about it. Uh, as I said, they're, they're, they are tightening up and certainly there's a lot of encryption that goes on. So you've really got to have a keen hacker um, before um, coming online and joining your meeting. Um, but I wouldn't worry about that too much at the moment. OK, so um, just moving on to the next slide. So this, I'm now just going to talk to you about how you switch in from face to face to online learning. And one of the key things that you've got to consider is using a platform that is also mobile ready because people are going to undertake your training either using a PC, they're going to potentially access it using an iPad or mobile phones. So you've got to make sure that there's a really good span of the technology that's able to engage with people using those different um, handheld devices. And most of them do offer that, but just check as you're, um, as you're delivering, as you're putting the content together, that it's mobile ready. So with our assessment process, we've created it as a completely streamlined update and we're able to offer that now within 10 working days. So um, there'll be there's a lot of support from our membership and assessment team. And as I said, it's only taking up to 10 working days to complete the assessment rather than the previous four weeks that we've had. So just to give you a brief overview of the form that we need to fill in for that, um, it's a simple three page form. And this is for face to face training that's more or less got the same title. Um, and is being broken up into online delivery. So I'm sorry, um, I can see the text hasn't actually come out here particularly well. But basically the sections of the form are looking at the training activity overall. So what the full um, duration is of the title, um, what the learning objectives are and whether they've um, trained at all, changed at all, whether you're going to be using a flipped classroom approach, as I've just explained. And then we look at the overall agenda and format. So we'll be asking you about your delivery channels and the technology platforms that you're utilising and how you're going to manage the process of presentations and how is this going to differ from a face-to-face -face course. Um, then we're going to talk about and find out a little bit more about how you manage delegate questions and how you're going to get back to people overall if they've got a particular query. So you can see this is a very kind of brief form compared to the initial assessment that you would have undertaken for your face to face courses. And that's because for those of you that are CPD accredited, um, you, you we've already undertaken quite a substantial assessment with you. We know your organisation extremely well. And so we're just looking um, because we've previously looked at the content and the learner journey, we're now looking at at how you're flipping that online and taking it down to a much shorter delivery channel. The last thing obviously we need to do is check the online activity. So do make sure that you give us the right URLs, um, login details, and make sure that 
they are available for a good few days so our assessors can log on. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so Joanne, uh, Joellen, sorry, has mentioned, um, are people that are furloughed allowed to undertake training? Yes, they certainly are. Um, and I think a lot of employers are encouraging people to do online learning whilst they're furloughed so that they can um, increase their skill and knowledge sets and kind of really stay on board um, with that. And Wissam's asking, if you're already accredited, should we make the switch in form? Yes, absolutely. If you've, if you've become accredited using face-to-face -face training, then you do need to complete this form to switch on to online learning. And then what will happen is you'll also get an updated um, CPD accredited badge, which will indicate that you've been approved for online delivery and, um, and that it's a digital um, delivery channel. So April May is asking what's furloughed? Well, well furloughed is um, the, a term that basically means that you've got um, specific and permission to have time off. And ha the government are using this term um, in order for employers to basically ask people to reduce their workloads to basically nothing at all. And what the uh, government is doing is paying up to two and a half thousand pounds for people that are going to be furloughed. So it's a way that employers can basically drastically reduce their wage bill um, whilst we try and get through this, well, it, unprecedented is the word that's being used a lot at the moment. So, <clears throat> So, yes, so we hopefully we'll get out of it soon. That's all I can say. Um, but, yeah, for the time being, um, furloughed is the, the term that the government are using. Um, and now I just want to talk to you about a webinar training that I've done, uh, which I'll forward you feed, uh, which I'll forward you um, the link to once uh, this is finished. So one of the things that you've got to do to develop really good, amazing online training is um, to use feedback. And in this video that I've put together, I talk you through a three step process. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is um, using the concept of Kaizen. So Kaizen is a Japanese word that means continual improvement. And it was originally used in manufacturing uh, to create a much more honed um, process. So what the management did was they asked employees on the factory line, how can we improve the quality, the productivity and the safety of our um, processes that we're introducing? Because obviously it assumed that the employees would see the kinks and the problems in the system. And so what I do in this video is talk you through a three step process whereby you can use the concept of Kaizen to develop enriching and outstanding learning experiences for your for your learners because often when people create online learning we see the uh, mistake that educators make which is that they assume hello can you hear me yes hello daniel hello can anybody hear me Yes, we can hear you, Daniel. Thank you for joining us. Um, so I'm just talking through how um, that I've created this video um, using feedback uh, mechanisms. So as I was saying, the um, mistake that a lot of educators make is they assume that the first version they create is um, the best version. And they then use the technology, the content, and the learner journey that they oh, originally Oh, everyone started. can hear me. For some yeah, reason, I, I cannot hear you. Amanda, so I'm not going to speak over her. Okay, thank you. Amanda, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Daniel. I can hear you. Um, so what you need to consider is how um, you can get iterative feedback from your learners. And basically, I talk you through the idea of making um, your first version an inter version. And you can 
um, all great technology solutions are always tested as beta versions. And so what you need to do is put together a focus group where you offer the training free of charge for up to five to 10 people. Um, <clears throat> so then you bring them together after they've undertaken the learning to really understand what they have found really useful, what you should keep doing if you design further online courses and what you should stop doing. So what were the bits that didn't work properly at all? And then whether they've got any ideas for content. And then what you want to be working towards is finding out if this group would buy the product, would buy this piece of education as it stands or what tweaks you need to make to it. And then ultimately, once you've launched the platform and you've moved into your alpha um, version, you then need to create a questionnaire at the end of it, which includes something called the net promoter score. And that's on a scale of one to 10, where you're basically asking, would you refer this product or piece of education to a colleague and you're, and you're receiving that score. So I'll forward you the um, link to this video, um, which is basically looking at how you can get feedback because that's really, really critical. And I know some of you are pushing to go online very quickly and certainly you can launch that um, imminently, but you do need to set up these feedback mechanisms and make time in your diary to go back and make these iterative changes. Um, so Joanne's asking, um, if the courses are already online, is there any need to do this? Well, if you've already got online courses and you've already been assessed for online, then no, you don't need to do that. But what we are offering for online providers is the ability to accredit up to five more titles if they already have an online accreditation. So, um, <clears throat> So do, uh, we can send you more details about that after the webinar. So we want to find out a little bit more about how we can support you during this period. And we've put together a reasonably comprehensive member survey. Um, I know that some of you have filled it in already, but we'll recirculate it after this webinar. And we really need to understand from you what we can do further, what information you actually need um, and support and guidance. So we're particularly interested in particular activities that you want us to engage in. So for example, do you want some support in new sales and business developments? Um, do you want to understand how you can improve your communication with existing clients? Would you like us to put together uh, recapping um, with previous delegates and, and creating an alumni? There's also a query, would you like us to talk to you about how to charge fees during lockdown? Um, and then we're particularly interested in whether you need any assistance with marketing copy, setting up digital marketing campaigns, and then creating these online courses, webinars, and podcasts. So if anybody, um, has any particular areas that they need help with then do please put that in the chat box now um, and then we'll also be circulating the member survey after this um, webinar so we also want to know what technology solutions you need advice on and whether there's any particular platforms um, that you'd like us to investigate and provide feedback on. Um, also, um, pay, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, also payment gateways for webinars, uh, whether you want some information on storing and recording Facebook uh, podcasts, using Facebook live streaming, and then also how you can record and store online courses. So all of that we can give you some information on if um, if you're interested in. And some of you are saying that you'd like feedback and the support with all of them. OK, well, we'll certainly see what we can do. Um, and Lynn is mentioning that fees are a problem between face to face and online courses. Yes. Um, you can sort of stumble around this, but I, I think it's fair to say that if you develop something that's particularly comprehensive, that's 
honing in to specific skill sets with specific audiences and professions, then you can still keep your fee banding high. So the more niche you go and the more specialised you can make it to a particular um, level of experience within a given profession, the higher fees you can charge for online learning. If you're just creating something that's on a very broad topic, then essentially can be undertaken by anyone and it's at a basic level of learning, then that is going to be able, that's not going to be able to attract a higher fee rate. You'll have to set that at a lower amount because obviously the amount of competition out there is quite substantial. So as I said, you need to get through um, as where is your niche, where can you add the most value and which clients, which industries are you, do you have particular experience in. So what we need to also understand is um, whether we can give you any further industry insights um, and how we can support you with having your CPD accreditation. So, as I said, we're running lots of um, webinars on this and uh, we're also running these 30 minute consultations uh, for you to talk to Daniel, who will be able to give you specific um, support in terms of technology platforms and how you put together a tech stack to support um, your technology delivery for online learning. So that brings me to the end of the session today. As I said, this webinar is recorded and we can send out to anybody that would like it the streamlined assessment form. As I said, anybody that offers currently offers online learning that's already been accredited with us, then we're offering the ability to accredit five more titles free of charge so that you can expand that online learning. Um, Reese has a question. If we get up and running with a long line learning program, how do the CPD hours get rewarded? OK, so what we would do is have a look at this program, um, have a look at the agenda, have a look at the length of time and then and then advise how many points or hours is relevant. Now, if you're doing it on Zoom, that's not a problem at all. We would need to see your agenda. We would need to see any slides that you're using. And then again, we can advise on the on the points um, and hours. Essentially, uh, and one hour equals one point. That doesn't change at all for online learning. Um, and obviously, it's going to be much shorter than it's previously been. Um, but I have been talking and consulting to a number of professional bodies and regulators about their CPD policies whilst we're going through this COVID-19 remote working and lockdown situation. Um, and um, all of them are changing their CPD policies to basically push the fact that you should be undertaking online learning through different delivery channels. So the market, if you like, for people undertaking CPD accredited online learning is growing by the minute. Um, there's about 2,000 professional bodies and regulators in the UK, and the combined membership of those is between five and six million. Um, so the workforce is about 30 million at the moment. Um, and so about 15, 16% of those are all required to do CPD for their professional body or regulator. And now all of them are being steered to undertake this learning online. As I said, the market is definitely opening up for you. So we've got a couple of questions about VAT. Um, you can charge VAT um, to students that are coming on in the UK. But what I would recommend you doing is advertising your courses um, and covering that VAT within the price that you're charging. Um, because you tend to get a little bit of a drop down rate when people go to buy the course at say £100 and then they see you're adding the VAT on the top. That can actually make people change their minds because they don't want to think about a separate payment for VAT. So we suggest that you build that into the overall price of the course. Um, so any other questions that we've got at all? Um, 
let me just have a little look through. Is there anything else that I haven't answered? Um, so James is saying, in my case, nothing has changed other than the fact that I've split my workshop into um, three parts. Um, I've got the same material, same presentation. I'm just doing it live via Zoom. So it's already accredited as a face-to-face -face workshop. OK, James, so all we would need you to do is fill in that form that I've just talked you through in, earlier in the webinar and understand how long it's going to take you to deliver that. Um, whether um, you would then be able to get it accredited uh, with a CPD approved digital learning badge and then you're good to go. Um, Wasim's saying he is less clear about whether the free accreditation applies to online self-guided e-learning. Yes, that's that's absolutely fine. So obviously a lot of e-learning can be self-directed learning um, <clears throat> and um, and that's absolutely no problem at all. You can certainly um, deliver that as online status. So um, Sean's asking, I need a better explanation to pass to a course attendees to how CPD is viewed as a qualification. Um, well, CPD tends to be a top up to a qualification, not necessarily a qualification um, per se. And we talked earlier um, about the fact that you can get a, not only a digital mark for your accreditation uh, that you display to providers, um, to learners, sorry, but that you can also issue digital badges and certificates to your learners, which they can then <coughs> Um, deliver, which they can then, sorry, list online on their digital profiles. And that's this whole idea of digital twins. So Andrew's asking, CPD coaching, how does this work for the new status? Well, at the moment, we're seeing coaches switch to online delivery. And so we can give you a little bit of guidance and advice on that, specifically from our membership and assessments team. But essentially, if you're delivering your coaching online in a one-to-one -one format, then that's absolutely fine to continue that and issue your CPD certificates accordingly. Um, Michael's asking, do you have any more advice for the technical best practice for webinar setup in regards to audio and visuals? Well, one thing I would say is making sure you have a, um, a really good microphone on your PC that you're using. And most webinar platforms will allow you to test that. If it's not working, if the sound is coming out slightly muffled, then I would recommend that you buy a separate microphone to plug in because the key thing on webinars is the clarity and crispness of the audio. So, <clears throat> so that's, um, and a key area that you need. With regards to visuals, it's completely up to you whether you use a slide deck or whether you want to switch on your cameras. Um, so I'll just switch on my camera now to say hello to you. Um, but I'm currently working from home. Hello, everybody. And um, not everybody likes to use face-to-face uh, -face sort of camera um, delivery because they're not necessarily set up in a ho in a professional environment in their home. So that's also something that you need to consider. Um, do we have any other questions at all? Um, Nazareth, we can set um, up you with some more information about the additional titles. Um, Joseph's asking, do we have any programs that we can use to make animation videos rather than the actual videos of the course trainer? We've definitely got some recommended, um, some recommended animation um, links, but I would need to forward those to you separately um, because, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I haven't got them on the top of my mind at the moment, and I'm sorry about that. Um, James is asking, what platform are we using for this training? Well, we're using Webinar Jam, and most of the time, it's absolutely fine. Sometimes there are a few technical areas um, that need tweaking. Um, but the great thing about Webinar Jam 
is that it not only gives you the ability to deliver these live webinars, uh, either using a slide deck or camera, um, but it also then records the webinar for you so that you can easily have a replay option to delegates. And that's something that you need to check with any webinar platform that you're using, that it definitely has that replay because so many people always want the recording um, for that. Um, uh, jo Ellen says, if you're in a back, in a bedroom, etc., you can create a more professional background. Yes, you can. Um, that's not an issue at all. You can use um, a screen behind you or the wall um, and just make sure that you don't have too many um, fu uh, fussy details in the background. So wherever possible, you should use a plain white wall um, behind you, perhaps with a picture or some plants or something like that, but don't have anything that's got a very, very strong pattern in it. Because what happens is when the video picks it up, if there's a lot of detail in the background, it will make it seem slightly fuzzy and that doesn't give you good visuals for your learner. Um, <clears throat> so Barry's asking, we currently have five accredited course, it, uh, course arrangements with you. Uh, we only have uh, four courses accredited. Um, if we change one of our existing, would that use up our fifth accreditation slot? No, it wouldn't, Barry. No, no, no. We're, we're offering this completely free of charge. So it would just mean um, that you've got an online version of one of those existing slots. Oh, Jo Ellen, sorry, is, um, is correcting me. Um, yes, um, you can create a digital um, background for your um, webinar um, and you can certainly do that on various other platforms. OK, so I'm going to bring the webinar to a close now. Um, if you have any questions at all, I'll just type in my uh, email address into the chat box now. So there's my email for you. If any of you would like the form for converting your CPD face-to-face um, -face courses to online delivery, then you'll need to email assessments at cpdstandards.com and the assessments team will be in touch with you. Um, <clears throat> um, and I'm just checking through the questions to check that I've answered everything. Um, OK, so, yes, I think I've um, covered everything off. So if, if you if you have any more questions, then do just let me know. Otherwise, I will um, sign off now. Uh, NASA is asking, what microphone do you recommend? Hmm. We've got some links on that and I'll send those through to you. There's certainly a couple on Amazon that you can purchase quite easily. Um, although I will say that some stockists of microphones are actually running quite low because everybody's working from home. So um, we'll send you through some links on, on suggested microphones. OK, so I'm going to bring this to a close. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me this afternoon. Anything we can help with, please let us know. I'll get in touch um, afterwards with the replay, but also, if possible, could you fill in the member survey for me? Because we'd really, really like to support you in all the different areas that I've listed. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we need to understand from you what we can help you with. So thank you so much. It's been great to speak to you all today. And um, I look forward to being in contact with you soon. All right, then. Take care, everybody. Keep safe, keep well and look after yourselves. We'll be in touch again with you next week to run a separate webinar. Thanks ever so much. Bye bye.